doctor. Say hello to everybody. How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm Alex, and this is our uh, pop-up show that we do every Monday. goes out over Facebook instead of a YouTube, although later on it is uh, ported over to YouTube. So I hope you enjoy that. I'm wearing my my little this uh, this I probably won't be wearing that much longer because it's uh, it's getting warmer and warmer. We actually took a walk yesterday or as far as Marjorie could go, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Meanwhile, let's let everybody that we have here admit, and uh, we have a couple of people going to be missing today. Uh, Wit, Wit is going to be missing. Trump has, quote, left a trail of unpaid bills in his way. Hold on. Those you just can't weasel out of. got their TV set on. Oh. Oh, oh you! <laughs> what everybody okay there everybody was like frozen there for a second anyway hello everybody how are you good good, good uh, coffee to you uh -huh. mm. good coffee we have uh, of course uh charlene uh, solis is here and marjorie miller is here and edward berger is here that's right <laughs> John, uh, you, uh, Ewing is here, and uh, Andrew Deutsch, and Len, and Charlie Wallace is there, but he isn't connected to his audio yet, so who knows where he's at. Oh, here comes Mike Chisholm, okay, boom, boom, boom. there we can add him to the group. We have some people missing today because Witty is uh, out, and uh, she has a doctor's appointment, and, and uh, Paul. And Paul is recovering. Re recovering from hernia surgery. Well, you don't have to announce it. <laughs> what, are, what are we, the royal family, for Christ's sake? <laughs> Can't we tell people when other people are sick? Sorry, Paul, and I, I didn't do that intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with her having a hernia. Jeez, almighty, I've got one. It just doesn't go bad on me like it went on hers, you know? What kind of hernia was it? Was it a hernia hernia or was oh, it just me? Or was hernia? Alex freezing? Huh? I think you on my set you were freezing, Alex. Everybody else was moving. I'm freezing and everybody else is moving. Well, it's it's fine here. So okay. that's all that matters. Am I frozen still? No. No. Okay. It was a moment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, so uh, anyway, we're, we're so who knows how many people will be here today, but uh, let's wish them all the best of health. Okay. It was a week ago today that I went to my doctor uh, and found oh. out. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, what I, I love about her is the sympathy I, I get. You know, she's had a myriad of, of medical problems. And for the most part, I've been sympathetic towards them. Every morning, the first thing I get out of Marjorie when I wake up, all right, is I'm dizzy again today or my back is killing me. I can only, I can tell you it'd be one of those two things. And I'm sympathetic. Am I not, Marjorie? Can I just so I get I get I get a little thing called cancer, you are uh, and and I don't get any sympathy out of you. I discuss how you are every morning. <laughs> you don't see me every morning at the beginning of the day. I come in here and I do some work. But anyway, I did a lot of work on the uh, on the uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the uh, Roku channel. Did, how many anybody here have a Roku? Well, then it doesn't matter that I mention it. Uh, Not Alex. Huh? You, you, you froze again. I we froze. Didn't hear what you said. But but so did uh, so did um, um, a couple of you. So I don't know what it is today. For us, you're the only one freezing. So what you're experiencing yeah. is your system freezing. <laughs> That's right. I don't know. I seem to be okay. Am I all? Am I all right? <laughs> <laughs> now you are. Hmm? What? <laughs> yeah, right. Hello, Mandy. How are you? Anyway, we were talking about Marjorie and her, her sympathy towards me when I get sick. 
Well, we're, you're starting to talk about your Roku channel. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, the Roku channel. Oh, Thank we, you. We were. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Uh, how many here have a Roku? Anybody? No. You do, right? Yeah. Yeah, I watched all the last night. I See? watched some of your vacation videos. There's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, I know, I know. I have to, I have to look at it. I put up our our things. I uh, I made a section of about six videos of Marjorie and I out in the park. Okay, and all the icons for them are us kissing. So if you want to see a whole bunch of, get yourself. It's worth old getting people. a Roku. It's worth getting a Roku just to see my kiss. Just to see these two old people up there kissing. <laughs> oh, hold, hold on, hold on. I'm calling Roku to cancel my account. <laughs> it, says, it says Marjorie and Alex and Alta Kaka loves. And it's watch. And she will. Yeah. <laughs> will. And she will what? <laughs> And Chisholm just, said he'd pay he'd, he'd see Marjorie kissing everyone, and I said, and she will, and she will, yeah. <laughs> yeah why not? He put the ball on the tee. I hit it. What yeah. do you want? <laughs> <laughs> well, lately we we I we always I always kiss her at approximately nine o'clock every night. I don't know why it's nine o'clock because she doesn't go to bed till ten or sleep. No, but it started when I used to go to bed to wake up to go to work. Yeah, so I give you a kiss every night. Yeah, but now she doesn't just want a kiss. Uh -oh. Uh oh, PG. No, it's not like she wants to have sex, but it, it's uh, <laughs> she wants a big sloppy kiss. <laughs> I want the real thing. And you know, have, have you ever gotten a big sloppy? Remember when your grandmother came over and kissed you, and you used to go, "Ooh, boy, grandma's got really, my grandma's got sl saliva <laughs> and everything." Well, it's kind of like that now. <laughs> I'm kissing an old lady good night every night. <laughs> the point is, and then I look at myself in the mirror and I go, I understand why an old woman is kissing me. You're right. <laughs> anyway. There you go. Yeah. But anyway, she uh, has some sympathy for me. So, how are you all doing? Good. Are you doing good. okay, Mike Chisholm? Everything go okay up in Canada? Uh, it is. You know what? Um, I gotta. I gotta let you know. Um, in the latest episode of the Letterman podcast, mm -hmm. available on YouTube and everywhere where fine podcasts are, <laughs> um, we talk a lot about you. And actually, we have a clip. I got permission from from Letterman uh, or Letterman's people to put the clip from Sheckfest of you uh, talking about Rick in the latest episode. Steve Weiner's the guest, and we talk about. Uh, about Shaggy's memorial, and so you're that clip of you is in there. We talk about you a lot in that oh, show. Okay, uh, <laughs> so so you figure my ego is going to force me to watch your podcast? Right? <laughs> no, man, no, no, no. I don't know about that. Uh, you're a legendary broadcaster, Alex Bennett, watching what little old Mike here does. I don't know, man. I don't know if I can handle the critique or the notes that you have. For me. <laughs> and I'm confused, Mike. You have a podcast. <laughs> Weird, hey? Oh boy. Yeah. Sorry, but, I'm just so you talked about tired. Blog. That's nice. Yeah, I'm glad you watched that I had that up there. Um you know. So I I um adore him so 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 much and he and I just we can we can talk on the phone. And three hours go by just like that. Like Steve and I just. Uh, yeah, well, I just Steve, if Steve doesn't shut up. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a point at which everybody, when we go to over to Steve's house for dinner, and it's oh. believe me, she, this woman, Steve Weiner, is was the, one of the original writers on Late Night with uh, David Letterman, mm -hmm. and uh, had the job for about a year, uh, yeah. and has been talking about it for thirty. Um, and uh, it says your internet is unstable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. I just yeah. you freezing up. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not freezing up here, so the thing that's recording is not a problem. Okay, oh. so, uh, but I just wonder why. I guess maybe it's something in the neighborhood or something. But anyway, where was I? Oh, um, Lori. 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 So she she will invite people over to well, I invite us over to dinner. Several other people with us. 
and um, she cooks. How do you describe the way she cooks? She cooks for an army, right? Well, she doesn't really cook. She really does take out. And, uh, and, and from so many places and so many dishes that she doesn't have to cook. You're just sitting there going, <laughs> oh, I can't eat another bite of this. It's too much. <laughs> it's so good. I mean, she's really a good hostess. She might cook but... one dish, but most of it's, you know. Yeah, yeah. Most of it is not cooked. And no, it's delicious. Most of it's takeout. Incredible, incredible. But after a while, uh, you just got to go, it's time to leave. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Because Steve just goes on and on and on and on, you know. So, and I loved Steve, mind you, you know. But uh, so uh, you know, the hard part, I guess, on your podcast was to get him to shut up. <laughs> no, I see. That's the thing when when Candy and I go over to hang out with them, as far as we're concerned, like it's the the eye of the beholder, right? Because you know we go see them, and I mean we love just spending the evening with those two and letting it go on and on. And let you're me, right. Let me put it this way. I've known Steve and his lovely wife for longer than I knew Shecky. Yeah. So that's how that's a long time. Okay. So when I see them, it, I don't see them that often, but when I do see them, it's not as special as it would be to you who just got to know them. Yeah. You know? There you go. Uh, there but, you go. But they're two lovely people, absolutely lovely, lovely people. So. You two bonded over Chuck Jones, which is very cool. Did we? That's what he said. He said that he used to talk about Chuck Jones every once in a while on the show, and then he would call in. And you guys would talk about that, and that's where. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, that, but, they, but I've known him longer than I knew Shecky. He introduced me to Shecky, so you know that's how that came about. Boy, how time flies, and then you're dead. You know, I, I'm sick and tired of all the people that I'm seeing that are dead. Um, who died this week? There's somebody died this week that I knew when they ran two people you knew. Well, two last people. week, last week they ran, you know, the obituary segment on CBS Sunday morning. And two of the people in it were people I knew, Jerry Foley and Malachi McCord. Wow. Uh, uh, and uh, not just, uh, you know, I, I knew I knew Foley kind of as a person that I always used to say hi to when I was up at the offices. And, you know, who, uh, he and I, you know, we, we would talk for a little bit. But then Malky McCourt was really a good friend of mine. I mean, we, we were together at WMCA here in New York, and we were uh, sol soldiers in arms, actually, politically. And... Uh, I've gotten this, I've kept seeing him over the years and in contact with him over the years and a really somebody I I thought the world of. So having those people go and then there was somebody that went this week that I knew on a on a marginal scale. Oh, but why is it the people that go aren't people that I want to have go? <laughs> why are they always people I know and love? Richard Lewis, you know, I lost him. Who else did I lose? Marjorie, you remember? There's one other this week or something that died, and I went, wow. But anyway, and then sports sports figures go a lot. And I wonder about that, because aren't they supposed to be healthy? <laughs> anyway. Depends on the sport. Well, so everybody should tune into your podcast is the point you're making, because you talk, you talk about me, and therefore I can highly suggest people listen to your podcast. It's well, I wouldn't go that far. I just wanted to make sure that you knew. <laughs> yeah, it's easier. It's easier to uh, than going to my podcast because you have to have a Roku. You know, my my channel, my Roku channel. But there's a lot of stuff up there. There really is. Um, I'm I, I, I'm watching the videos that I've got that I'm putting up, and dead, 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 dead. You know, I'm. And then all of a sudden I realized I'm 84 years old. Of course there are going to be people I know who are dying. What is there el what else is there to do? It's the old uh, Carl Reiner uh, story about the you know the best of the thing. First thing I do every morning is get the New York Times and look at the obituaries. And if I'm not in it, I go on with my day. <laughs> uh, how's everything down in Georgia? I always like to have a little Georgia report. 
because it looks sunny out there. Is it sunny? Yeah, pretty yeah. sunny. Yeah, yeah. And I might say I've been to I've been to Atlanta once in my life, but I found it to be a very very lovely town. It is. It's pretty good. It's full though. It's just full. We full. Nobody else is allowed. And, oh, and nobody. If you're planning on going, turn around <laughs> and go back. <laughs> But it, it, it's a beautiful town, just wonderful. Yeah. When I was there, I went. I went to. This is fun. Stone Mountain. Yeah. Which is yeah. the Confederate Memorial. They have this like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Mount Rushmore type thing. Yeah. On the side of a mountain. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> 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 oh well, they'll never get rid of that though. It's like privately. It used to be on, like run by the state, and then it got privately taken over. But. They'll never, there was people that protested thinking that needed to be blasted off and no, they'll never do that. You know something, I I, I don't know how upset I get by that. You it's know? just, they do like a whole laser show. Like it's, it's like patriotic kind of, but yet it's still like Robert E. Lee on a horse, you know. But yeah. Uh, Thomas uh, Jefferson Davis and those people. But I can't well. remember what it looks like now, but it, it was a, basically, it, the idea was to have a Confederate Mount Rushmore. Yeah, it's like a it's like a carving on the face of it that's flat and it's you know really huge. Um, so it's a carving and it's Robert E. Lee, Jefferson Davis, and I'm trying to think of the other person. I can't think. I, I shouldn't. I, know. I think I think Donald Trump, isn't it? I think it's Kanye, <laughs> Kanye, Kanye West. Kanye, with Kanye West. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. It. But I. Th I thought it was interesting. You know, and at the time I went, it wasn't like you sat there and went, oh, all the, this is a uh, big tribute to the Confederacy. This isn't right. You know? Uh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's kind of just like a, like I said, they kind of focus at just being patriotic in general. Just I mean, for What the, do you do to, if you don't like that, what do you do with that mountain? Just get a jackhammer? <laughs> I know. I, I don't know how they would do it. They would, like I said, they would never do it. There's no way they would get rid of it. It's too, especially just to natives, Georgians and stuff that they never get rid of it. It's a really nice, like you can walk up the other side. You can walk up the mountain and go to the top. They also have sky buckets, you know, sky lift that takes you to yeah. the top. There's all kinds of stuff to do there. It's, you know, it's fun, but they, I can't remember. Do they charge you? 30 years. Do they charge you? Yeah, they charge. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so um, um, uh, I'm glad to hear it's nice down there in, in Georgia, the home of Peachtree Streets. You say they added a few more? Oh, there's tons of there. There's Peachtree Industrial Boulevard. Well, there's... I said to somebody, how do I get to such and such? And he goes, well, you go down <laughs> Peachtree Street. Yeah. Turn it's right like... onto Peachtree. Peachtree Road. <laughs> East Rand Industrial Boulevard. <laughs> yeah. And you just kind of keeps going, but it's basically a highway. But I think it got to be so much of a joke that they just name everything Peachtree now. Well, there's a town called Peachtree City. There's a town called Peachtree Corners. Um, what else? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I um, take it, and it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, that there's a lot of peach growing down in that area. I don't <laughs> think so. Really? There's not. South Carolina is really more of the peach capital, I think. The climate changed and Georgia doesn't grow many peaches anymore. Mm -mm. Well, I'm going to go down and demand that Atlanta change the name of their street. <laughs> <laughs> Did you remember the peach tree dish? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, that is horrible. But it is bad. Like we're peach day. Taylor Green, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one from the from Georgia who said it's in a peach tree dish. <laughs> Did you really? No. Oh yeah, about, yeah. about a year ago. Um, yeah. Having to turn on a monitor. Uh, so anyway, so um um um, you know, how's it down in uh, Texas there? Even it's actually uh, chilly and wet. We've had a lot of rain. Really? Weekend, yeah. Well, that should put out the fires. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we needed the rain though. It's been a while. I just don't know how somebody who's politically such a left winger as you are, <laughs> I can't even stand living in Texas. Only in Austin. 
<laughs> Austin. Well, Austin. Austin is a uh, is a college town. Yeah. And college towns are traditionally far more left wing than any other part of a very left wing, a right wing state. Yeah. Young people are very liberal. Yeah. And uh, are they voting, are they voting for Biden? In Austin, sure. Okay. Not as good it does with the rest of Texas, though. I just love this election. Nobody really wants to vote for either of these people. <laughs> They're so tired of them. You know, um, it's kind of like a rerun, you know, of a bad sitcom. Um, yeah. Yeah. John Ewing, how Novato, how's it doing? Everything's beautiful here, Alex. It's springtime. Yeah. Everything's beautiful. The buds are coming out in the trees, the flowers, the sun's out. Mm -hmm. Where are you? The mountains are on fire. I'm, I'm, in, <laughs> I'm in Nevada, north of San Francisco. <laughs> Yeah, this Nevada is in Mar north of Marin County. That's the right. Part. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were in Nevada. Oh. <laughs> it sounds similar, bro. <laughs> and we've been joined by Edward. Edward, what's your last name? Is <clears throat> Here it says Edward iPhone. Edward Cramp. Ed! Oh, How are you, buddy? I didn't recognize you with the dark glasses on. Lake well, it's sunny out here. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the man. How many times have you fired me? <laughs> I think I think three times. Is it was three it, times? Was it three times? Yes. It, well, I know it was. Yeah, it was once. Yeah. Twice, what, what, yeah. What, uh, once, uh, once for no, once for no apparent reason. Yes. And the sec and the second time for no apparent reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was really two times, wasn't it? Two times. Two times you fired me. Yeah. But but you've told me several times that it'd be an honor if I fired you three times. I, I uh, always told him that. I, I Ed was a great uh, boss of mine, and I liked him a lot. And uh, even though he fired me, has fired me twice. I go, so good. You know, you're still good. You're still fine. One of the biggest it's mistakes I ever made. I made a big mistake. Firing Which me. Which time? Yeah, but I, but I think it I think it made you better when you came back. I think uh, you 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 were much better when you came back. Really? Yeah. I thought I was much safer when I came back, which for me is not better. You know. Uh, in I the radio environment, in a radio environment, is probably better. Uh, you're probably right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so he is so uh, he was my boss at that time. At the, you were at he was at Live 105, and uh, then uh, the second time you let me go, it was really you know, it really wasn't a case of letting me go, it wasn't like I had the job for a long time. You brought me in to do the morning show at a station you were managing in San Francisco that was basically owned by a very right wing company who all the talk stations they had were right wing at the time. No, I, I put I had Air America oh. on a uh, nine sixty. I put Air America on nine sixty. Yeah, but I know that. But prior yeah. to that, uh, the company right. is by and large the head of the uh, talk, uh, talk division or whatever had a, had a thing he used to say, and that was the definition of talk radio is right wing. You remember he said that? He said that publicly. No, I I, I never managed that way. I, I always just did what I thought was. Best for the radio station and ever. He, he came yeah. into town and he listened to me in the morning. And didn't he say to you something like, Is this guy kidding? <laughs> no, no, I think we were trying to do something different. Yeah. And and put you on to see if we could, you know, the station had no no audience. That was the old CNET station that you were on. No, no, yes, yes. It was yeah. what was funny was it was it wasn't this, it became CNET, but what happened was is I got fired by by uh, Ed, and then uh, I had to leave this radio station, which was what, KNEW, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And all of a sudden, uh, CNET decides to do what they call an LMA, which is when you go in and you rent a radio station or frequent mm -hmm. you know, signal, and you pay the owner a certain rent every month or whatever, and you do your own station. So CNET took that over, and they hired me to come in and do a show for them. 
So what was funny was I replaced the people, you know, I, I replaced the people that I would have been replaced. It's too complicated, basically. But it, it that I was I was working that station, but these guys weren't after I left, you know. So yeah. yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you too. As a matter of fact, uh Kim and I are celebrating, we'll celebrate 38 years of marriage next Saturday, and you were at that wedding. Was that that wedding? You were at that wedding, yeah, 38 mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah. You lived on a uh, on a on the edge of a lake, and while you were getting married, two ducks were screwing in the pond. Do you remember? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How many years ago was that? It's 38 years on Saturday. My God. Is that something? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's something is that you stayed married for 38 years. Yeah. Well, this is my second marriage. Yeah. My my, my first marriage lasted uh, three years, 10 months, six days, and seven hours. <laughs> you got it figured out, huh? I did. Yeah. <laughs> but I love this guy. He's always been a good friend. Well, I love you, too. And uh, I would say that uh, you are the highlight of my career, I believe. That's the most significant thing that uh, I'm remembered for was probably hiring you and then uh, firing you. But Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Everything's, That's what I'm saying. everything's frozen now. If... Yeah, everything's frozen. Wow. You like... Yeah, here we go. We're back again. Yeah. We were frozen there for a while. Anyway, stick around. Hang out with us today. This is just the nice show. We frozen. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Alex, it's you. I know. I, no, it's not me. It's well, there's something here that is you guys freeze on me, I freeze on you. Um no, but, it's but it's you know, it's it, it we'll just live with it today. Apparently it's something wrong with the uh uh with the what do you call it, the uh uh internet signal here in uh, my neighborhood. So uh, but uh, everybody just everybody seems fine. Yeah. I have a question. What? Where the fuck is Kate Middleton? Where, yeah, where is Kate? Well, yeah, in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> is she if I she's helping me with the plumbing? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> um, today Marjorie said, "I said, you know, we're going to go out in some shit." I tell them about my my little, you know, pr- problem with leukemia, which isn't serious but leukemia. And uh, she said, do you have to tell everybody? And I said, who are we? The Royal family? Of course we tell everybody. <laughs> it's the Royal family that doesn't tell anybody. Um, I, I don't know. Wild Doctors are pictures. Now, I, wild, different theories, medical, or she's holding out because Willie's having an affair. They say he's having an affair. But but could you think it could be a medical thing instead? I I think the knife slipped and she stabbed herself. Maybe that's what happened. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I I really can't tell you to be honest with you. It's uh, just been I, doubling down, and they're just. I mean, you think they would be saying something? Well, I, you know, speaking of that kind of thing, have you seen Melania lately? Trey. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is election season. She should be out there helping and, you know, no. wash, washing the dishes or doing something, you know, <laughs> and uh, and and she's she's kind of disappeared. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, yep. And then Marjorie, have you seen Marjorie? I haven't seen her for quite a while now. Is everybody frozen again? Oh, God, this is. Yeah. I think Melania has been repossessed since Trump couldn't come up with the uh, money for the New York <laughs> State. <laughs> well, we, this, they, this came out today. This, this is not political. This is financial. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it turns out that Donald Trump has been turned down by what? 20 different banking institutions. Yep. They don't, even, they don't even really want to take his property as collateral at this point. They don't even want to take the property. Yeah. That, yeah, they should. He proved me wrong, Alex. I bet that he was going to pimp out his wife and daughter to get the money, but it didn't happen. So, <laughs> which daughter? Uh, the the smart one. Here <laughs> comes Charlene Solis. I guess we lost, yeah, we lost her. her. She grabbed a phone call. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, here comes uh, Charlene. Is she there? Is she there? Charlene? I'm there. I'm here. I don't know what happened. Yeah, we don't have your picture. But oh, I wonder why. <laughs> well, I don't know. I like how I look better, just the white. <laughs> I don't know why. The, 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 I go the off and try it again? Hit OK, and then it'll appear. Yeah, it, don't, it, don't, it, actually, you should have a thing that says. Uh, um, Let me see. Maybe I. Oh, I see what it is. The camera. Oh, I did it. Yay. Yay. Miracle. I did it. <laughs> In case you've never called this program before, Ed, which you haven't, but you've probably listened to it. This is just a nice Monday show. It's just pleasant with pleasant people. And I, I love this show. You know, th this is the way the Internet should be oh, rather well. contentious. You know? And there's our friend uh, 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 Jeff Stein. And who? And, and who? Is that your... Is that your it's my daughter. It's your daughter. Oh. Yeah. Hi, daughter. Hello. <laughs> oh, Hi, everybody. Yeah. Is, is he a good dad? Yes. Oh, okay, good. I just want to a little make... grumpy today, but he's a good dad. <laughs> <laughs> he never gets grumpy on this show. No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know why, because it's my job to get grumpy. <laughs> That's right. You take over for how, how old are you now, Ed? Uh, I just turned 71. 71. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See how we're all getting to be old farts. Tell me about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're how old, uh, Charlie? 74. 74. Wow. And Marjorie's uh, 85. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's sleeping on the couch. Turn your mic on. I can only hear you yelling from the other room. Did I Oh, now she froze. I don't make me older than I am. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I don't know. You know, I, everybody told me the best thing to do if you if you if you want people to uh, not think you're a phony or whatever, always tell them you're older than you are. Oh uh, yeah. And then and they say, say how great you look. How great you look for your age, exactly. You know, it's a good plan. You know, so you tell them you're 84 like me, that you, you know, you married somebody your own age. And then they go, oh, you look great for 84. You know. <laughs> and, and you look great for 84. Yeah, right. Fine. You look great for 80. Yeah. You look great for 80. That's crazy that that's what 80 looks like now. I mean, How do 80, I look for 84? This 80 is what 80 looks yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> really immediately it it took it took uh mandy uh, uh, sorry i gotta put this <laughs> he has to go answer the doorbell uh, yeah i guess know, dinner's here huh <laughs> very nice of you to say but nobody else jumped in you know <laughs> so uh but um anyway how are you doing Vernon? Hun, down there in kentucky do you want to know how old my daughter is Oh, wait a minute. It's not nice to ask. <laughs> I would say, I would say my slightly over 30. Oh, I'll pay you later. <laughs> oh, really? Really? 49. No. What? what? That a girl. God, when did, when, when did Jeff have, when did you, when, how old were you when she got, was born? She must be the 30. first. 30. We're 30 years apart. Was that the first born? No, second. Oh, really? Yeah. God, you little devil, you. <laughs> He's gorgeous. Well, uh, yeah. you won't believe it, but our good friend uh, uh, Mike Chisholm here is, is a grandfather. A grandfather, yeah. yeah. Just turned 48, too. There she is. Oh, <laughs> she's a girl. Did she, she, just, I know. she just turned 48? I did on uh, you did the, uh, the same the same day that Shecky passed. Wow. March. Yeah. Ooh. Now okay. we. Oh, thanks. Oh, it's March. I don't really advertise it, but yeah, it's weird. It's forever changed now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Um, um, uh, there's somebody else I was going to ask a question of, and I can't remember who it was. Uh, That's because you're 84. 
thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, guy in Kentucky, that must have been me. Yeah, how's but everything down? In, how's everything down in Kentucky? It's a little cold. I took the dog for a walk this morning and I about froze my cojones. <laughs> really? And I had, to put on, I had to put on my Alaska jacket. It was so cold. Mm -hmm. I, I had temperature problem today. You had what? Temperature problems. And oh, we froze up again. Damn it. Long. We're having some kind on of... On my window, it's snowing. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I, when I lived in Houston, there was a guy, because he could get cold in Houston. There was a guy in Houston who built a sculpture of a monkey. And under the monkey was a brass kind of plate. You know what's coming, don't you? <laughs> and he had on this monkey brass testicles, which would <laughs> respond to the temperature. And if it was below freezing, everybody in the neighborhood would hear this clank. <laughs> uh, true story. True story. <laughs> so has anybody been watching anything good? We watched the, the tour. Oh, the tourist. I saw that when it first came out in England. I liked it. Yeah, it was a good, good show. Yeah, yeah, it's a good show. Uh, I started I watched, watching Turning Point. Turning Point. Yeah. What is that? It's uh, it's about the bomb and the Cold War. Oh, okay. Um, we watched last night. We watched this thing about John Wilkes Booth that they started. Hmm. They did a whole thing on the assassination of Lincoln, but it's more on the chase for him. John Wilkes Booth, and it seems Canada had something to do with it. The banks in Canada, and I, it's, it's no kind of, white Bronco, though, huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no white Bronco chase, huh? <laughs> no, I didn't catch you. What did you say? I, I said no white Bronco chase, like oh no, OJ no white Bronco horse. chase. It's a white quarter horse. <laughs> 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 So, Ed, what, you're still living up in where? I live in uh, Indian Wells near Palm Springs. Oh, really? I thought you were up north, like, in, towards uh, Napa and things like that. No, no. But, here's, uh, but it's pouring right now where I am. Wow. Is that a golf course I see out there? No, that's a pool. No, there's a golf course across the street. Yeah. And I I think when you, uh, yeah. when you when you when you got married didn't you, weren't you living near a golf course then? Excuse me. Were you living near a golf course when you got married? No, no, we were living where uh, where, where Oracle was, and that was Red Redwood Shores. Oh, that's where they did move. That's where the old Marine World was. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so we were living on, uh, you know, that's a, a landfill. That whole thing was landfill. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Boy, we're getting a big attendance today. Jeez, this yeah. is getting hey, Brian. Here comes Brian Neary now. He, he is he in his office? Is he in his car? Is he at home? In He's in the yeah. car. There you go. <laughs> Time to pick up Adrian. No, 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 no. I'm in Lodi, like an hour and a half away. <laughs> what, uh, what, uh, what car are you driving today? My normal daily driver Cadillac. Cadillac. Oh, you love your little Cadillac, don't you? Yeah, it's got like 150,000 miles on it now. The last year, it's really kicked up the mileage driving to Lodi. Let me ask the big question. Oh, no. How much? <laughs> how, how many miles to the gallon do you get with that beast? With this one or my this one? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I guess you make way too much money. Yeah. So, don't, because don't it, say doesn't, that. it doesn't matter to you. <laughs> I don't know how much gas I. No, no. Actually, actually, the thing is that they take care of my car for me. They, I personal car usage. Yeah. Since I travel, yeah, yeah they Electronic they pay me for everything. So. Productivity. So they pay you for that, huh? Okay. Yeah, that's it. Works out good. I need to get a new Tesla though for commuting. New Tesla? Why? Why? Or, 
or a new job. No. Uh, Why do you need a new Tesla? Uh, for commuting, you know, Teslas are great for commuting. You know, electric cars, I should say. Hybrids are good for commuting. Yeah, yeah. So uh, why? But why you already have one? Well, you're that's your wife's, right? Or your, excuse me, your significant others. I keep saying wife, and he's not married to her. <laughs> Maybe not say significant other soon either. He, oh, oh no, come on! Ooh. Uh, what is well, that? Breaking my quit, heart, Brian. <laughs> quitting his job, getting rid of the wife. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> Wait a, oh wait a minute, Ed. What did we see there? Your dog? Yeah, that's that's uh, oh. that's Ace. That's Ace. That's Ace. Oh, you like that? Marjorie loves dogs. Is that a good? Yeah. He's staring at the rain. Would you want one of those, Marjorie? Your mic. Your mic isn't on. You're on mute. <sighs> yeah. There you go. There, Marjorie. No, I would. I, I prefer a different breed. What, what breed do you prefer? English setters. No. They're, they're big. I love them. I've had them my whole life. Well, I, ne I never want a dog. I never want a dog that poops bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I often wondered if if people came from like outer space, extraterrestrials, and they landed here. And they saw some guy walking this thing, and then the thing takes a dump, and then the person picks up the stuff. They think the dogs are in charge. They think the dogs were in charge. Yes. You? They are. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they I are. Cats are in charge. And, uh, cats are in charge. Yeah. Are you still yeah. a managing uh, uh, Ed? Managing talent? <laughs> You know, I, I, I got into talent management uh, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I managed mm -hmm. uh, Spanish talent named Fialine. And yeah. uh, I should have done this 30 years ago. Really? And you're still doing the same guy, right? Yeah, I'm still doing him. And I consult another company. I mean, I still need to work. Um, I didn't. Um, I wasn't uh, dishonest enough to be able to retire from the radio business. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But 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 uh, the guy he's managing, oddly enough, you're managing a uh, Spanish language talent, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you know whether he's doing a good show or a bad show? Uh, it's ratings. a really good it's a really good question. Ratings ratings are worse now than they were back in your day with the PPM and everything else. Um, they do a terrible job. The rating service. I'm always in trouble because I'm always writing to uh, for my clients or people that I know to drop the ratings and, yeah. and live without it. You know, they could spend that money uh, on talent. They could spend that money on marketing, investing in their properties. Instead, they just want to further ruin everything that they that they touch. Yeah. Is, is radio business. It can't be that good these days. You know, I mean, because people have too many options now. Well, you know, they always did, Alex. If you go back and think about it, we had the, remember when the 30-minute uh, cassette came into uh, fruition and then it went to 60 and 90 and then 180 and then CDs were there and then reel to reels. The problem with radio is people used to put in a CD or a cassette whenever there wasn't anything good on the radio, nothing compelling. So that's the problem. If they put more compelling stuff on the radio instead of playing it so safe, they would do better. Yeah. Remember, we la we launched Live 105 by saying the station had dared that station had dared to be different. We were different from everybody else, and we won by being different. Yeah. Now you lose by being by being different because PPM is, um, you know, if you play something unfamiliar or you do something unfamiliar, people turn the channel and go away. So there's no branding anymore, yeah. and they've. They, I think PPM was a death knell to radio. PPM means but, what? And these people don't know the term PPM. Per, per, personal, personal people meter, where you have a device that looks like a beeper, and you don't have to write what you're listening to. <clears throat> it automatically picks up. It's encoded in terms of what you're listening to. And um, every every radio station puts out with a PPM signal, so yeah, that these yeah. little things that people have, right? Yeah. You know, but but I'm the sure. but the pro but the problem with the radio business are the owners. They 
they pay too much for their properties and they can't pay their debt. So they go bankrupt and then they screw everybody and then they they have to justify it by letting everybody go. I, I remember the guy who runs uh, iHeartMedia. Um, uh, uh, the guy used to run MTV. I, I, I forgot his. I forgot yeah. his name. He's uh, a guy. He's a guy actually that neg- uh, rigged the job for me at uh, at uh, the Quake originally because they couldn't get a hold of me because they didn't want to get sued for trying to wipe talent away. So they got a hold of this guy to get a hold of me. And I thought he was calling me from MTV to give me a job. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he talked during the pandemic, he talked about the fact that radio is going to do really well because people will have, you know, their friends on the radio and companions on the radio. And uh, because that's what they'll need because they're going to spend a lot of time by themselves. Three weeks later, he fired all the companions. You know, <laughs> they got rid of everybody, so they justified it, it that way. So, yeah, I, I don't. I still think that if you were on the radio, um, you came back to San Francisco or another marketplace, and you did, and you did the same shtick you did in the '80s, you'd be very successful, and you and you do very, very well. Nobody, nobody would let me, and we couldn't have a live studio audience because no station would want to have a bunch fifty some odd people in their studio with them. Strange people, yeah. Drinking coffee, yeah. stealing things off everybody's desk. Yeah, I know. <laughs> exactly. but, uh, but that's uh, that's what made it great, though. That's what made it great and memorable. Yeah. And whenever I meet somebody yeah. and I tell them what I used to do, they bring your name up right away, and I'm a hero in their eyes. Uh, by the uh, way, tell tell yeah. that to my wife, will you? Because <laughs> well, you know, after I watching, your, understand. After, I just tell her I used to be a big shot. After and watching, I didn't your, know him when he was a big shot. After I watching found you on the way down <laughs> on your strolls through Central Park, the way you guys communicate mm-hmm. and relate to one another, I wish you were with him when I had him, because then I would have had somebody like you to talk sense to that might have yeah, been able in, to talk sense to him. In those days, I wouldn't have wanted him. No, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think Ed would be the first to to admit that I was uh, just a wonderful talent to work. <laughs> Especially when you used to challenge me on the air. <laughs> Hold on a second. I mean, uh, because we right. have a hand up here. Uh, Mike Chisholm. Yes, Mike. Uh, well, first off, I think you guys were talking about, is it Bob Pittman? Were you talking about Bob? Bob yes, Tom. we were. Yeah, Bob, Bob yeah. Pittman. Um, the thing, Ed, I'm super, super curious. Do a lot of these talents, now that um, you talk, mentioned iHeartRadio and whatnot, now that a lot of these talents are able to, and it seems to be that there's a mechanism where uh, their show is available on demand, podcasts, whatever you want to call it. There's a mechanism now. Are a lot of these talents gaining audiences because the audience can go catch up on stuff that they missed or whatnot? Is that is that transition or translation happening for a lot of these on-air talents? Yeah, the, the, it, it's happening. It, so what's happening is, is that your radio audience goes down and everybody thinks you suck. But they're catching you on streaming, which is not being yeah. picked up by the ratings. And then they're catching you on podcast, which is not being picked up on the ratings. So but but on, on paper, you you look like you suck. And because yeah. there's no yeah. there's no ratings way to capture everything that you're really doing. And more more importantly, your engagement, uh, because they sell impressions now. They don't sell ratings. It's impressions. So they'll they'll put a package together and go, we want five million dollars. We'll give it. Give us five million dollars, and we'll give you a uh, we'll give you uh, a a, um, a digital proposal, streaming, podcasting, and a little radio. You know, if they have time, they talk about radio. You know, every, the problem, you know the the problem with podcasting is in the very beginning when it first started, and I I actually say I was the first podcaster because when I left a job uh, in uh, in San Francisco, one of them I started doing a daily show. And uh, then uh, I literally created a mechanism. Somebody created a mechanism for me that people could put on their computer that would immediately go to to my program where it was being fed from and find out if it's a new show. And if it's a new show, it recorded it for the person. Now, what does that sound like? Podcast on demand. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And I, I, I was the first one to do that. So... But- but but the point I'm making is is that going from that, which I thought was the 
a wonderful thing because it was going to democratize broadcasting, which was always something I believed in, that everybody could kind of have access to the media, where in the past you had to have many hundreds of thousands of dollars to be able to buy a transmitter and to get a license from the FCC and so on. So the idea of democratizing broadcasting was a wonderful notion to me. Yeah. I didn't realize that once it got popular enough, the same companies that fucked up radio was going to fuck up podcasting. <laughs> You're right. Exactly right. But listen, I, I don't I, I want to say this to, to your group here. Um, this is my 45th year in, in the business. Yeah. And you are singularly the most talented person I've ever met who sat behind a microphone. And I want you to know that from the bottom of my heart. You're also the biggest pain in the ass I've ever worked with. So <laughs> you, 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 I'll, you're, I'll you're second not, that. You're number one in both categories. <laughs> he he's our pain in the ass now. Yeah. That's right. But, but but you should definitely be in the NAB Hall of Fame. Definitely. It's a shame that you're not. Oh, yeah. well, they're really I was, missing, I was they're really missing something big. I was up for it, you know, a couple of years. I know, and I know the two guys who are in the nominating committee too, and I pushed you really hard. Craig Kitchen and Dennis Green. Those are the two guys you need to email or send your 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 something to or whatever i don't know well, ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars to probably do it oh they'll probably <laughs> probably put me in the in the broadcast will you do something for me since you know these people if i yeah. drop dead okay yeah. no. they decide wait a minute and they decide they're going to put me in the broadcast hall of fame yeah tell them i don't want it yeah, I'll, the reason I don't want it is give it to me while I'm alive. That's fine. When I'm dead, I'm not going to know it. So fuck you. <laughs> yeah. But we'd have to fly to Chicago to make that happen. And I don't want to be in that city right now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. right. We don't want to do that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm also thinking if I if I do I make their in memoriam montage. You know, oh, geez. I'm still, look. I'm still I'm still pushing for my my uh, angle here. Um, because you just you deserve it. Uh, being in San Francisco media all these years, and you know, I was inducted in the Hall of Fame up there, and you wrote, yeah. You, you, yeah, and it was really interesting because I couldn't wait to show that video you sent for me supporting me, mm -hmm. and they had they had technical difficulties, so it never got shown. Oh well, well, okay, you know, yeah. talk about a conspiracy. Yeah, it is absolute conspiracy. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of people here that remember the Bay Area shows, Len LaFrisco and and yeah, you know Ed, he, uh, you know, the music you guys programmed on, uh, on the on the well, he was not on the click. You were on which one? You were on the Live One Hundred Five. Wow. I hated that music. I hated it, but I listened because yeah, I love. You never music. heard music on my show. Yeah, you you had to play music every <laughs> once in a while, didn't you? Well, what I, what he used to say was everybody needed to go to the bathroom, so I'll yeah. play a song. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I, I never listen to that station except for those four hours in the morning. I'll tell you what, one time, though, I got I, I think maybe you, you guys were saying, gee, you should play, play, a little, play a little more music. And so I decided for one hour, I was going to find all the shortest songs I could find. <laughs> and I found songs, I actually found one song that was like under a minute. Beautiful. These were all by major artists, okay? And I got them all together, and I think in one hour... I managed to play something like 35 songs. <laughs> and I then, after that, you may remember this, mm -hmm. Ed, used to go on in the morning saying, this is Alex Bennett, and this is your more music morning show. <laughs> yeah, remember that. Nobody yeah. can beat how many records I've played in an hour. Yeah. Well, the, the one of the best promotions we did was we had two sets of bumper stickers for his show. One was Alex's for me, which I ordered 5,000 bumper stickers. Yeah. And then Alex isn't for me, where I ordered 15,000 bumper stickers. <laughs> I have both of them. I have both of them on the wall. We have both oh, of them on the cool. wall here. Yes, absolutely. She knows. Yeah. It. That's when I used to be a big shot, dear. You have any extras I want? Once in my time, car. honey. Yeah, but which one do you want? Alex <laughs> is for me or Alex isn't for me? Oh, I'll man. Let you know. Yeah. All right. I I got to go with with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we come out with a, a billboard that said Alex Bennett isn't for everybody. Yeah, we did that too. We, yeah. as I said, we were uh, if 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 the industry was going left, we went right. If we went right, we went left. And we were the uh, renegades of the airwaves, and we had that attitude. And that's still, that's still be a winning attitude today. And no one's everyone's afraid to do something different or drastic. 
Yeah. They're scared. They're scared because because right now, uh, all the, the 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 big shots in media, their big goal is to not get fired and get their golden parachute for screwing ruining the whole of the industry. Yeah. All these people, the cumulus and everywhere else, she gets the ten million dollar parachute, golden parachute, for screwing up every major brand that 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 company ever had. Look at KGO in San Francisco. They have a cum, which is the number of listeners circulation of twenty seven thousand people now. They used to be like a million and a half. It was the number one station for the first twenty five years I was in radio. They turned it into a sports gambling station. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's terrible. This is, what these, this is what these idiots do. It's incredible. Well, that's AM radio, and that's kind of going the way of the dodo, I think. But anyway, you know, the thing is that, you know, it really, uh, really uh, it was a time when we were doing stuff like that, and you could do that. I mean, really, there wasn't a lot of syndication and things like that. And, uh, uh, you know, you were in a market, you fought each other like dogs. And uh, may the best man win. And that was that was a and it was an interesting time to be in broadcasting. Did you ever try to syndicate, Alex? Uh, no. I you know I I was going to go to the to Washington D.C. to work for WJFK. Um, and um, they were offering me national syndication, uh, mm. and um. But then I didn't go. And Live 105 then, in order to entice me to stay, said, we'll put you in syndication. And they never did. So mm. I never got into syndication. No, no. Mm. So you mean, so they never put you on their classical music stations and syndicated you on those stations? <laughs> no, <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> what a shocker. What a shocker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, um, you know, it, 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 it was quite a time. Quite a time. And this this guy was a great boss. I mean, I enjoyed him. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and we would fight, you know, but we were fighting for the same thing. So that, that was what made us have a real commonality. And the fact that he truly did appreciate me, he was the guy who came up with the I idea how to get me over yeah. to Live 105 by doing a baseball concept, which was, uh, we'll, we'll take him off your hands to the other station, but you pay for like, uh, we'll only pay 40% of his salary and you'll pay 60 and you wanted to do a deal where you went, uh, I think, 50-50. And if I beat my ratings at the station I had previously at, at uh, the Quake, or yeah, at the Quake, that um, uh, you would then take paying the rest of it, okay? And they would be off the hook. They said, no, we're not going to go with that deal. And the first book, I beat the ratings I had at the Quake. They would have been wow. off the hook. They would have been off the hook, yeah. They had to pay they was, 60 they was so out. yeah they they were so arrogant that they uh they they mocked me once and said oh this is Ed Cramp who took our prized possession away from us like <laughs> like uh I, I I I'm the one who got screwed and I knew all along that I that, that we were gonna win they, and it was gonna be great. They didn't hmm? want me. They didn't want me. You know they I, didn't they didn't appreciate you, they didn't understand what you especially in the Bay Area at that time. Syndication wouldn't have worked for you. Uh, like it doesn't work for Ryan Seacrest. I mean, you're it works in Spanish because every local market, they're all dealing with the same issue of acculturation, education, immigration, and all you know, common themes in terms of yeah. whatever. But yeah, I think you would have worked in New York, you know, yeah. definitely New York, LA, maybe. And San oh, New, York, New York, I did very well. Yeah, New York, I did very well. And, yeah. and uh, uh, San Francisco was my big deal. You yeah, know, that was my biggest success. And, and you were you were success at KML too when you were there. Huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but but yeah. in no small measure to you, Ed, and I thank you for that. You know, but uh, you should come on the nighttime show sometime. I'll just we'll just do an interview. We can do it in the middle of the day. I'd love I'd love to do that. that. Yeah, I love I'd yes. love to do that. And yeah. come back here. We I will. Fascinating. I'll be back. Yeah. I'll keep quiet next time. I took too much of everyone's time oh, no, today. No. Well, sorry I mean, you know, uh, was, everybody was interested in what he had to say, right? Totally. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the biggest terrestrial now. radio station right now? What's the biggest terrestrial radio station? Is it like K Rock or is there like No, a... you know, I I I ran K Rock. I I've I've run 
station's in Los Angeles, the station's in San Francisco. K Rock's on its ass right now because uh yeah. they had they had uh they had a big morning show. Ready for this, Alex? They had a seven million dollar morning show. Really? Kevin yeah. and Bean. Yeah. Kevin and Bean plus uh well, they had uh, uh, Jimmy, uh, what's his face, who's on ABC, Jimmy, uh, who's on ABC Kimmel. at night. Kimmel. Kimmel, they had a whole bunch of other Ralph people. Garman, yeah, Ralph, Ralph Garman, Ralph Garman. Yeah, they had a cast of thousands. And um, wow. yeah, but now, right, right now they're they're struggling. I think alternative struggles because of the demographics. No one wants to, you're not having a, a lot of young, white, 18 to 24, 18 to 34 year old kids being born right now when most of them are Hispanic. Yeah. Those are the demographics that everybody's facing that they got to deal with. Yeah. But my recommendation for Live 105 was they went back to the, you know, they went back to Live 105 after they changed the name. You know, they, they changed the name from Coca-Cola to uh, uh, to uh, uh, knee high, uh, knee high. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and then they wonder why the ratings. That, that, and so they revived it. I think they should have made it classic Live 105 and have you as a, a guest host at least a week, a month. And have hmm. Big Rick back and Mark Hamilton. They and, but they didn't do anything. They, they felt this by coming back and using the name they were going to invoke the past. And, and you know, a radio station is only as good as what it is today. Yeah. Know? Well, when you run a radio station out of a broom closet, which is what they're doing, <laughs> right? That's a computer that's running the whole thing. That's yeah. what you get. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll be in touch with you, Ed. I have your phone. All your right. A number here and yeah write, same time write me an email and just tell me a number i can text you well i can i can text you at your phone number yeah okay yeah, you got a deal be in touch thanks to marjorie miller who is my current wife by the way in case you're not <laughs> uh, aware for being here also uh, a big thanks to uh uh, um, uh john ewing for joining us from novato uh andrew deutsch um from is, are you in cleveland am i right about that Ground noise. Yeah, I'm in Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, Len LaFrisco is in the Bay Area. Mike Chisholm, who's up there in Canada. Um, Charlie Wallace is down there deep in the heart of. And uh, <laughs> Mandy O'Brien, she's been kind of quiet today, but uh, we just, as long as your face is there, it's worth it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Ed Cramp for being here. We really appreciate it, Ed. My pleasure. I appreciate Jeffrey Stein for being here and um, so Charlene Solis and Brian Neary. And who just signed off that I. Andrew. 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 Oh, okay. Well, thanks to Andrew for joining us. And I, I, I think I thank Mandy. Yeah, of course I thank Mandy. How could I not? And here now is the voice that probably can make a fortune doing cartoons. Edward Bergen, who signs us off by saying. That's all folks. <laughs> okay, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.